When it's good and I can breathe a little And my path is winding in your life I hear your sweet voice say to me You're my child and I've set you free I remember all you've brought me through Cause you're so good You're so good You were so good to me You were so good You're so good You were so I slip and fall into the middle Of an ocean full of broken dreams I feel your hand reach out to me To give me what you know I need I remember all you brought me through Yeah, you were so good You're so so good to me You were so good You're so good You were so good to me yeah. Through it all, you will never leave me Through it all, you never let me Lift your hands, lift your hands in this church. Tell Jesus who he is. He's worthy to be praised. He's the King of kings and the glory. He is our righteous ruler, our King, our Redeemer, our Savior, our Prince of Peace, our Elohims, our Almighty God, wonderful Counselor, Christ's name. Just pray two seconds. Speak to him this morning. I don't know what your week's going like, but start speaking to that circumstance. Start speaking to that thing that's been coming against you. Just declare his name. Come on, Father, we worship you. We praise you. We exalt you. We thank you, Lord, that we are children of God, washed in your blood, redeemed by your name. We thank you, Lord, that we're children of promise, children of promise, children of peace. We are the salt to the world. We are the solution to our worldly problems because of Christ. We thank you, Jesus, this morning. We praise you. We worship you. We give you praise. I thank you for every person that is here today. I pray for them this morning, Lord, that whatever their prayer requests are, they will come to pass. We thank you, Father. For the Spirit of the Lord is with you, says the Lord God Almighty, for I hear you. I am with you. Thank you, Jesus. God's good. God's not bad. God doesn't want to punish you. He wants to help you this morning. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. So just a few short announcements, um, and what a beautiful day to be in the house of the Lord today. Um, this morning we uh, welcome everyone that's online, so good morning to everyone that's watching online today, um, and we also welcome all our new visitors today. Just a, a, a couple of things, just to explain the buildings for those that are new. Um, so we have this building, this is the building that we come in to pray and worship and um, the one next door is for where the kids church is and um, the cafes in there as well toilets there's one toilet in here and there's another one next door in the second building um, tonight no service tonight um, so we do apologize for the late notice for that 
Wednesday morning is our corporate prayer morning, so that's at um, six o'clock here at the church. And if you're unable to attend, um, you can join in at home. Just you know, um, we usually go between six o'clock and seven o'clock, so that's not on um, streamed or anything like that. We just do it in the comfort of our own homes. So um, just with our kids' church, um, Beck's really in need for some help in there with the kids. So um, what we'd like to do as a church is just to put in a roster system so that um, parents can take it in turns so we can all help out. Um, so if the mother's here or anybody that's willing to, to lend a hand, if and oh, great, hands are up already, that's wonderful. So if you can see Beck and um, she'll put in a roster system and thank you very, very much. Um, just one other thing, if you do have your phone on you, if you can put it on silent or turn it off and just, you know, because it is the house of the Lord and, you know, we come with respect to the God that we love and serve. So if we can show respect not only to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and also to one another and to our, our pastor as well. So with that, I'll now call on Grace if she'd like to come up and do the communion this morning. Thank you. Good morning, church. I hope you all have had a good week. The best time, communion time. Um, if anyone is missing the communion elements, just put up your hand and Keitha will make sure that you get yours. Thanks very much. I'm just going to open in prayer and share a scripture with you that God's put on my heart for today. And we will have communion together as a church. So I just thank you, Father, for your word that's going forth this morning. Lord, I pray that you would open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to receive the living word this morning, bring revelation knowledge, wisdom, and understanding as it goes forth. And I pray that each and every person represented here this morning, for their families, for themselves, and for those yet to know you, will have a new beginning in you, Jesus. We pray this in your mighty name, Lord. Amen. So the scripture that I will be sharing this morning is from Ephesians 2. Sorry, I'm a bit short. Oops. I'll just read this and um, just expound it a little bit. So Ephesians 2, verse 11 onwards. Therefore, remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, who were called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, verse 12, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God to, in the world. Verse 13, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once who once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having ab abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is the law of commandments, contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. I was just studying this scripture a little bit. I'm just going to speak from my heart and just allow God to minister to you. We were once people that were afar off. We had no hope and we had no God because we weren't part of the covenants of promise that were promised to the commonwealth of Israel. What did Israel have? They had this commonwealth. God was going to bless them. And through Israel, God was going to bring a redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And because we weren't part of this commonwealth of Israel, we were far, far away, having no hope and no God. 
but through the Lord himself and through the perfection and completion of the cross, his body and blood, the perfect sacrifice. He was not only high priest, which was commanded and demanded in the old covenant offerings, but he was also the sacrificial lamb, the eternal lamb of God. So Jesus Christ became the high priest and the eternal lamb of God. He came, he ministered, he offered himself, he died, he was buried, but he didn't stay in the ground, he was resurrected. Why was he resurrected? Because as son of God, he came as son of man. He was perfect, holy, and justice himself. In Jesus was justice. Jesus would not have been risen by the power of the Holy Spirit if that whole cross that he went through wasn't perfected and wasn't justified. So today, when we come and take the body and blood of Jesus Christ, let's honour him. As all those names came up when we sang just now, the name that is above every name, you know, whether you say Jesus, Yeshua, Yeshu, you know, in Malay or in Chinese or whatever name you say him, he is still King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the Lord Jesus Christ. So this morning as we have communion, let's honour him, let's thank him for the body that was broken so that we are made whole. Let's thank him for the blood that was poured forth so that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. So can we just get ready the bread? So everyone ready? He was broken. Sorry guys. He was broken so that we are made whole. So I want you this morning, wherever you've got sickness in your body, just put your hand on it and just do this by faith. We just do this by faith because that's what the belief is. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and God has made it so simple. Just believe and you and your household will be saved. Okay, so let's just do this. Father God, we just thank you so much for your son, our Lord Jesus Christ. When he came, Lord, he came as the great sacrificial lamb. So today we do this by faith for ourselves and for our families, wherever we need healing in our bodies. We declare by faith that by your stripes, Jesus, we are healed. Amen. Now get ready to wine. Lord, I thank you for the new covenant that you not only rescued us, but you have grafted us into your family. We were the wild stock and you grafted us into the vine and that now we are sons. Your word says we are sons of the Most High. That when the Father looks at us, he sees Jesus. And when he looks at Jesus, he sees, he sees us. And that's why the Bible says we have sonship. We have sonship. So we thank you, Lord, for our righteousness. We thank you, Jesus. We are washed whiter than snow. You've put our sins away forever when we put our faith in you. And just, we just thank you and we say amen in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.
tight timing. Let's hold our offering in our hand. Can you all hear me? If you brought, if you are come prepared, you can hold the offering in your hand. But if you are someone who is, gives offering online, you can still um, pray over it as well. Okay. And there are different ways of giving, uh, which will be coming on the slide. All right. Let's bow our heads and pray. Our gracious and loving Father in heaven, thank you, God, for this lovely day. Father, we come prepared at your feet to listen to your word, as well as to obey your commandment of giving our tithes and offerings as well. Thank you, God. Prepare our hearts um, to receive your love and spread it around us. And also, Father, look into our, we invite Holy Spirit to look into our hearts and our mind and show us the wrong things that we have done through this week and we apologize for all that we have done this week and father and we ask you to accept the offering that we have brought at your feet today may this offering be a blessing to each and everyone who has come prepared in building up your kingdom we ask all this in the precious name of jesus amen This morning before we preach, this is my wonderful wife, Beck. She does, some of you might not see her because she's always in the second building, but uh, she's a big part of this ministry. So we're going to pray before we preach today. Beck's going to go into the other room, but we're going to open in prayer together. Father, we thank you this morning for this great church. We thank you for the nation of Australia. We thank you, Father, that you've positioned us in this nation to be your people and I pray, Lord, that your word will go out today and change and liberate us. I pray, Lord, against every spiritual blindness that comes over people. We break it in the spirit. We take authority over it right now that people will be positioned, firmly rooted in this church where they can flourish, where they can grow, where they can be a, a people of God who's called them to a time as this. So we release the word today. We come against all witchcraft. We come against every coven. We take authority over it over this church, and we declare that God's word will go out and achieve what it, is go, what it has called to do, and that is to bring liberty to our world. Amen. Yes, amen. Thank you. <laughs> Jan, can we... Can you just put this on for me? Sorry. Text me one, two. Second mic. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So that's the one, two. The second button next to this mic. One, two, one, two, one, two. That's not working. Emily mic. The reason why I'm doing this is because there's a bit of um, feet, there's a bit of um, what's it called um, effects on this microphone, so there's a bit of a delay. 
Um, so that's the mic I wanted to use, unfortunately. Let's try this one quickly, sorry. One, there we go, let's do that one. So we'll use that one. Okay, here we go. Isn't that better? Yes. No feedback. I tell you what, sound can be someone's worst nightmare. <laughs> but we, 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 we're here now. So I just want to quickly open quickly before we go a few announcements that I forgot to tell Catherine there. Because um, we're running out of time. Graeme Ross at the back. Please put your hand up, Graeme. Everybody see Graeme? Graeme is the leader of our men's social gathering. Okay? So, yes. So please go see Graham if you're a male person or a man. And uh, this Wednesday at the church, 5, 5 o'clock to 5.30 p.m., we're having a gathering here, 24th of May. This is for the men, okay? Tonight is Bryn and Share, 5 p.m. Bryn and Share is where you can bring a plate of food or something to eat, and we're all going to eat in the cafe at 5 p.m. in fellowship. So no church tonight, just a fellowship. Get to sit and talk and have coffee. Um, and then Rick at the back. See, Rick put his hand up. There's Rick. Okay. Rick has is, is helped us with any person in this church that needs help. We've got this document where you put down your name and what kind of help you need. And we're going to put a notice board in the other cafe. So, you know, because we need to know who needs help in the church. And they can write that down. And then secondly, any worker business owner, contractor, what, whoever you are, whatever skill, you can put down your details. So if anyone in the church would like plumbing done, carpentry, electrician, handiwork, we know who to contact, okay? So thank you, Rick. And uh, believe me, we will make sure that these contracts don't cheat you, they don't lie you, because as a pastor, I'll hit them on the head with the Bible, okay? And <laughs> so we'll make sure that there will be no scammers, okay? We will check them out. All right. Let's quickly stand, just quickly, one more time, and hold your Bible and say this this morning. Today, I declare that this word of truth has the ability to liberate me. Because the Lord said, my people will know the truth, and that truth will set them free. So I lay claim to every promise that this book has. It's mine. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to talk to you this morning about a very challenging message. Very challenging message. And the reason being why is the Lord put this on my heart. Will the church be ready for the coming of the Lord? Will Christians be ready for the coming of Christ? The Lord put this message on my heart. It took me quite a long time to develop it, go through many scriptures to bring this message to you. I believe it's a message for the time and the hour that we're in. It's a message for the remnant church, not the mega church, not the lukewarm church, not the compromised church, not the Laodicean church, but the church that is willing to serve the Lord properly. So this message over live stream, YouTube, all of our social medias, I'll encourage you to watch this message. It's a message for the church to be ready for the coming of Christ. We're living in a time now where the church is a mess. Christians are a mess. And we need to get this message out this morning. Let's go to John 14 verses 2 to 3 before. This is our opening verse. This morning it says... In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Next slide. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will, I will come again and receive you to myself, that 
where I am, there you may be also. So Jesus Christ is telling his disciples as he was resurrected from the dead, he has gone to prepare a place for his people and he will return to gather his own. Only his own. Being a Christian doesn't mean you're ready. Going to church doesn't mean you're ready. Going to church every week doesn't mean you're ready. He says he comes back for his own and receives him. This is a very challenging message this morning. And I can tell you now it's for the remnant. It's only the remnant at this hour that are ready for the coming of the Lord. The lights, the cameras, the smoke machines, the fluffy messages aren't going to cut it. They aren't going to set you free. They're just going to keep you happy in your seats and keep you sinning. We need the gospel of Christ preached with truth that brings freedom in our life. Amen. So I'm quite, quite prepared to have one person in the seat if I preach the truth. Because that's what may happen. And I'm prepared for that because I know I'll stand before God and he'll say, well done, good and servant. You've made it. I'm not interested in numbers. I'm interested in pleasing God and fulfilling his call in this nation of Australia that the Lord has brought me to this country to be a voice to bring freedom to people through God's word. Amen. Amen. I might be in a suit, but that's okay. It's a cheap suit. I didn't buy a $5,000 suit. I'm not after Mercedes Benz and hotels, believe me. I'm a humble surfboard manufacturer that came out of an industrial industry that said, Lord, use me at the age of 15. And we've seen many people healed and delivered of demon powers. And many of you are witnesses of what's happened here. And we're going to see many more. So Jesus is talking about going to heaven and preparing a place for you and me. And he returns. So what is the rapture of the church? What does this caught up, taken away, this removal, the rapture of the church? Who is the church? Firstly, in 1 Corinthians 12, 27, it says the church is the body of Christ. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. So you and you and you are the body of Christ. It's not this building, it's a group of people individually that make the body of Christ. That's the body of Christ when we say, is the body of Christ ready for the coming of the Lord? Are individually, each person sitting here, are they ready for Christ's return? That's what we're saying. And so, let's have a look at this rapture, because rapture is not in the Bible. Did you know that? Did you know the word rapture is not in the word of God? We're going to teach you today. So let's, let me just move this quickly, get my thing ready there. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 to 18, and let's read. For the Lord himself would descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Wait there. There's going to be a sound in the spirit realm. This is a signless event that will take place that no man can see. And the Bible says that those that rest in Christ now will be resurrected at this coming. It means they'll have body resurrection of those that are dead in Christ. It means those that have already in eternity will be resurrected from the dead and meet us in the air. This is the first resurrection of the body. The second is the resurrection of the condemned. That will be resurrected unto condemnation and eternal hellfire. So this is the capturing up. Next slide. It says, then we who are alive, that's you and me, and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. So we have the dead in Christ that are resurrected in bodily form. And we have you and me that are alive today that will meet them in the air with Christ Almighty. Woo! Won't that be glorious? The question is, are you ready? That's the big question. We all want to get to that cloud. We all want to get to heaven. But are we ready? And so that day is coming. There are two significant events that are about to take place in our world is the revealing of the Antichrist, this evil leader, and the rapture of the church in the times that we live in. And so this trumpet sound was only two places in the Bible. 
It happened in the Old Testament, the book of Exodus, where God rallied the children of Israel around Moses to the Mount Sinai, and he sounded the trump of God, and the mountain thundered, and the voice of God spoke. The second voice of trumpet was at this time when the rapture of the church took place. And so the trump of God is a sound that always is for a gathering of his people at one time. As they gathered at the mountain, the trump sounded. So only two places in the Bible is the trump of God sounded. Are you going to be ready? We're going to find out. Amen? We're not here to keep you happy in your chair. We're not here to keep you happy in your sin. We had to get souls ready for the kingdom of God. We're not here to keep seats warm. We had to get souls ready for eternity. Amen? So the capturing up of the body of believers comes as a signless event. This is a signless event that no one will see because in the second coming, every eye will see him coming in the clouds with his saints. But the rapture is a signless event that only his own will hear that sound. Those who are alive will hear the sound and meet them in the air. Whew. What is the rapture? The word rapture is not in the Bible. The word rapture is used to try to explain the supernatural removal of a group of people or a person. The word in the Bible that it teaches is this, taken away, was taken, caught away, went up, caught up. But we use the word rapture to explain this removal of a person in the spirit realm. Where do we see evidence of the rapture? We see it in the New Testament and in the Old Testament. A man called Enoch was raptured from this earth. In Hebrews 11.5, we're going to read two scriptures here. It says, by faith Enoch was taken away. See there? Taken away. So that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. It's only the righteous and those that please God that qualify for the removal of this place. And so Enoch was raptured before the great flood. And I believe he was preaching to that world to get ready for that flood. I believe it. And the Lord removed him before the flood. The next incident is Elijah, the prophet of God. In 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 11, it says, Then it happened as they continued on and talked that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Woo! Caught up. So this removal of God's people can happen. It's happened before and it will happen again. Philip, I, won't, I don't have the scripture, I'm just going to go quickly. Philip, Acts 8.39, he was caught away. Paul was caught up, 2 Corinthians 12.2. Jesus was caught up, Acts 1.9-10. And the body of Christ in 1 Thessalonians has, is caught up. So my friend, this signless event is going to take place. The question is when and how, we don't know. There's no date on it. If someone puts a date on it, we've got problems because no man will know. But this event is going to take place and the church is not ready. Christians are not ready for this event. Say this, Jesus. Jesus. I pray, I pray. That, you that you will have me ready for when you come, I shall be with you. You see, you're not on this earth to get drunk and have a good time. You're on this earth to prepare yourself for eternity. And we have to stand by the doctrine of eminence. The doctrine of eminence means we are to expect Christ's return at any time. And the Bible teaches on the doctrine of eminence. Because in Matthew 24, verse 44, Jesus says, Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. 
And in Philippines 3.20, which we don't have, talks about that your citizenship is in heaven and we are to expect our Lord's coming. So the doctrine of eminence means that Christ is coming at an hour you do not know. So that life that you live in that's not pleasing God is not worth going to hell over. That sexual affair is not worth going to hell over. That drug abuse is not worth going to hell over. It's not worth it right now. It's not worth living in compromise because that's not worth going to hell over it. Did you know that? Say this, Lord. I'm part of your church. I pray you have me ready. Because you could come at any minute. And I'm going to be ready. Amen. Our lives have to be ready for the return of Christ at any moment. That's how you need to live. So I'm not building my life and comforts around my worldly pleasures. I'll say it again. I'm not building my life around the pleasures of this world. I'm building my life concerning the Word of God so that when He comes, I'm ready. I'm not going to church because it's comfortable. I'm not going to church because they preach a nice soothing message. I'm going to church to prepare my soul for eternity. I'm going to that church that's setting people free because that's where the Spirit of God is moving and that's the place I'm going to get on fire for God. Amen? Amen. We've got to speak it like it is. It's not time for monkey business. It's not time to sit on the fence. It's not time to get involved in all kinds of funny doctrines and beliefs. It's time to get your life right with Christ and His Word. It's time to put away the books and start reading the Bible. We need a reformation of the Word of God. This is the reformation that we need today. Amen? We need the Word of God back. So what is the state of Christians and our world today? Let's have a look at the state of Christians and our world today. Let me just get myself there because I don't want to keep turning back because then I'm, you know, I've got my back towards you. But we're just going to highlight some scriptures before we get into some meat. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 to 5. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power and from such turn away. This, my friend, is the times we're living in now. There's no more good. What good is bad, bad is good. There's no more faithfulness and loyalty anymore that's out the window. There's no more care for the other person anymore. People have become lovers of thyself. People have become pleasured in their own vanity looks. They're more interested in what they are. And they're not willing to stand for moral laws anymore. We in a sad time of history. And all of people that you speak to can all clarify this, that our world has changed. Our world has significantly changed. As we've all noticed that when we were kids, we used to play in the streets. There was no worry. Mom would scream out the window, dinner time. Come home with mud in your hair and legs. Get in that bath. Eat your dinner. Now you can't trust anyone. You can't leave your kid in that street because you don't know who to trust. So the times have changed, and this is the times we live in according to that scripture. But I have good news for you soon. There is absolutely no care for what should be right anymore. People and Christians are doing what's right in their own eyes and what feels good. And this is the downfall of a large percentage of Christians being ready in the church and even pastors equipping their congregation 
to be ready for the coming of Christ. Pastors that are willing to preach to have their churches on fire and ready for the return of Christ. You see, us preachers are not here to preach a fluffy message. We're here to prepare the sheep for the return of Christ. We're here to prepare them to get delivered, to get set free, to get healed, to get saved, to disciple them, to be on fire. This is not a club. This is not the RSL club meeting where we gather and socialize over cookies and creams. We come to hear the language of God so we can leave changed by the Spirit of God. That's why we come to church. Amen? I'm excited. I told you about a dream and a vision I had. And I saw millions lost like that. And a remnant that were ready, a small amount. And the Lord was saying, grab them quickly. Get them into the fold. Get them into the fold. Hurry, hurry. The dream ended. We have a job to do. Not just me, but you guys in church have a job to do. And that is to win the lost. To show who you are in Christ. To be an example to this world that is perishing and that is in a hopeless situation. I can't tell you the countless young adults I minister to that are lost in the occult and new age. That haven't had the upbringing that some of us have had. We need to reach them into the kingdom of God and stop preaching comfortable messages anymore. Amen? Amen. Come on. City de Basuku. Because that Satanist, a new age person, you can't fool them. They want to see the power of God. They can see the heart of that pastor, whether he's genuine or not. You can't bluff them. There's only one thing they respond to, and that is the power of Christ working in that place. Our churches have become spiritually dead. But God is moving powerfully. The end time revival is an end time revival of deliverance. The end time move of the spirit is a move of the deliverance. How many of you have noticed that? All over the world right now, there's a move of deliverance. Why? Because God needs to set his people free for the coming of the Lord. Because his church is bound up. Bound up. And we're not going to let it happen. Amen? Amen. We are the church triumphant. Yes. Woo! We have the answers. So let's have a look at our world quickly. I'm going to give you some worldly updates. Is that okay? Yeah. I want to show you the state of Christianity right now. Pastor in America. I'm going to read this. Pastor in America. They gave me the middle finger at the altar. Listen to this. This is in church. This is happening. A good-looking young adult couple recently approached me at the altar asking for a prophetic word of blessing regarding their relationship. Expecting me to just quickly bless them, they bowed their heads immediately without even seeking the Lord. I said, are you two sleeping and having sexual relations together? They looked, the look on their face as their heads snapped up was priceless. They didn't even have to answer me. I said, you are asking me to bless something that the word of God is clearly readily called sinful. You don't need a prophetic word. What you need to do is repent of your sins. Stop sleeping together. Separate. And then I'll pray God's blessings upon you. Well, this couple marched out of the church faster than I could blink the eye and gave me the middle finger on their way out the door. To be completely transparent, as I continue to preach in more than 50 churches and conferences a year in America, I'm fully convinced that if the true uncompromised gospel of Jesus Christ was boldly preached with authority in many, many of our churches, they would be emptied out rather than filled up. Sexual immorality is at the top of almost every list of the sin in the New Testament and it is emphasized in the book of Revelation as one of Satan's primary weapons against the church in the end times. Lift up your hands. So this is what he says. We're lifting our hands up on Sunday morning and pulling our pants down on Friday. That's not okay. Friend, that's church now 
in our modern time, Christians are not willing to separate themselves for God. And this is happening in the church. And I can testify this happens to me as well. When people come for deliverance, I say, you're going to have to stop that sin. You're going to have to walk right with the Lord for these de devils to be cast out. The person said to me, it's too hard, I can't. Never came back. I can give you list of list of Christians that are not willing to serve the Lord. This is the times that we live in in, in our world. Be ready, church. This is a reality. There's no more conviction of sin anymore. This is a hard message. I told you it would be hard because the Lord put it on my heart to prepare this remnant for the coming of the Lord and for those on live stream. I want to touch on our world right now. Five nations called BRICS have assembled five nations together. Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa have formed what you call the BRICS, which is a world trade currency that they're trying to build together to outdo the USA currency. These nations are meeting in August this year to discuss development. 20 countries are about to sign up into this new world trade currency. This is not good for our world. This is what's happening. This development is going to significantly change the way world trade has been conducted in the, in the past. The US dollar has been the currency used in world trade. When major nations move away from the US dollar in world transactions, we've got problems. This is going to change the world economic significantly. The USA economy is going to be badly affected and America will suffer badly as Australia and all Western cultures. The Western nations will suffer through this deal. God is allowing this because he's gathering the nations together. Especially in the Western culture. World leaders are going to be under stress as the economy start to unravel and their people start to suffer. They're not going to know what to do. God is getting his faithful churches and believers ready for a time such as this. There's never been before. Amen. God is getting these nations ready for the great tribulation and the coming of the Lord. Are you ready? Don't put your trust in world leaders and economic, economicies. What is it? Economies. They're going to fail. But God will never fail. Don't put your trust in these leaders. Put your trust in God, in the Word. Russia, China, Iran... Turkey, South Africa, Brazil are all starting to work together. The nations are starting to gather together at this time. Watch Israel at this time with what's happening. Church, the Lord is allowing this because he's preparing his church at a time such as this. I don't watch the news, but I thought I'd give you a little bit about that of research that I've done. Is that okay? The sign of the times, Matthew 24. Let's read what Jesus said. What did he say? Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Next slide. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. Next slide. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. What is the sign that he gave? Deception. They asked him, what will be the sign of your coming? Be careful you do not be deceived. So the great deception is a key sign that the Lord's return is soon. And let me tell you now, deception doesn't come with an earthquake and a fire. It comes in a template of peace. You're not going to see it. That's why I'm preparing the church to be ready, because many are going to be deceived and are deceived in this time. It won't come with firecrackers and whistles and warnings, but deception is already within Christian lives today. 
Deception is the sign of the times of Christ's return. The great deception of our world. How many were deceived at the last pandemic? Many were in fear. Many weren't ready. Many didn't know what to do. And I said, thank you, Lord. It's a dress rehearsal for what's coming. Let's test our faith right now. Let's test how to navigate through this. It was a great example, isn't it? A great test. I said to my wife, this is an awesome test for us to navigate through this time. And we went through it smooth. We did not fear. Deception comes, like I said, in peace. Matthew 24, verse 24 for false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. How are you going to see that? How are you not going to get deceived? How are you not going to be deceived like this? That even Christian people, the elect, possibly could be deceived and fall away? This is a serious thing that the Lord is talking to you and me about. And I'm preparing you because Christians will be deceived. When you don't want the truth, you will be deceived. If you're a Christian and you don't want to come to church for the true gospel, there's a chance deception can come in your life because you're not desiring the truth. Number three, when you are not spending time in God's word, you are able to be deceived. Number four, when you are not in daily relation with Christ by talking to him, you can be deceived. I talk to Jesus all day, every day, 2 a.m., two hours, three hours, on my knees, praying, speaking in tongues, at night time, praying, reading, listening to the word. That's me and I'm a pastor. So how many are even praying and reading their word? Because if you don't, deception will hit your home. I'm not saying this to brag, but I'm doing it as an example that if I have to do that, how much more do you? You know different than me. Many Christians right now are in complete deception. I had a, a young person come for ministry. Just listen to this. Three pastors said to her, now, you don't need deliverance. It's just in your mind. Get some counseling. You'll be okay. Well, this person came here. She was riddled with demons. There were so many demons, we didn't know what to do as we started to drive out one by one. Leaders told her, you don't have it. It's okay. So deception is already at work in our church. It's time that you start to read the word and find the truth yourself and stop listening to people without the word. Amen? Amen. I could have popped that leader on the head with the microphone. I promise you now, I would have smacked him on the head because that person almost walked away from the faith. And somebody said, go see Pastor Hilton. You need to go see him. They came to me. They were shocked. As soon as I put that Bible, these demons just started screaming. I said, thank you, Jesus. You brought this person here. And as we work through them, they're getting delivered and set free. I don't care if you guys are offended by me telling you that. We have to speak the truth. If you're not seeing a move of God in your church, start questioning why. If you're not seeing people being healed and delivered, ask why. If you're not seeing a manifestation of the Spirit delivering people, ask yourself why. Because in Mark, Jesus preached in the synagogue and that man manifested by the presence and anointing of Christ that was in that church. Ask yourself these questions. Am I in the right place where I can grow spiritually? Am I in the right place that's going to feed me? Am I committed to the local church? The local church? Or am I running around to every single speaker I can get my hands off and by the time I get back to my local church, I'm spiritually finished? Hard message. As your pastor today, I have a right to do it. Exhort, rebuke, convict. Bring the word of truth. I have a responsibility, and I will stand on that responsibility. 
because of what the Lord has shown me at hours of the morning. As I've cried before the Lord and have seen so many lost. I pray that this message will touch your heart to bring change. I'm not against churches or pastors. I'm against compromise. I'm against deceitful compromise. I'm against lukewarm preachers that don't preach the truth, that are not prepared to get up on that platform and speak it like it is and tell the truth. I have a problem with that. Because this job is not a comfortable job of a paycheck. That's not the way you enter ministry. This is a calling and anointing by God that very few are willing to go through the pains. If you knew what we would were chastised with, if you knew spiritually what we had to go through, you would understand. I've been chastised like you won't believe it. The smallest thing in my heart is like elevated 10 times when I entered the ministry of deliverance because the Lord was fixing these areas in my life. This is not a nice cushy job. This should be a challenge to get up and stand by faith and preach this gospel. This should not be an easy thing to do. And they say that in America, they enter in seminary school because it's a nice career to go to Bible college and get a position in a church and get paid a weekly salary and service the people. But I look at this as a mandate from God and a calling from Him to preach this Bible with an uncompromised heart. Because he's going to bless me. Amen? Yes. So will the church be ready for the coming? Will the church be ready? Because Jesus says this in Luke 18 verse 8. He says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Jesus has said that. Jesus said, will he find people or faith when he returns? He's basically saying he's not going to find it. He's basically saying only a small remnant are ready. Only a tiny amount. Will he find faith? Will Christians be ready? Will the large extent of the church be ready? No. Because a big part of the church have to align with the Antichrist to formulate into that system. Because not all churches will go into that system. Because the spirit-filled remnant church will be ready for Christ and they will be separated. But the large extent will have to dilute its doctrine to align itself for the benefits that the governments will give them. Scary, eh? The Bible says that Laodicean church in Revelation was rich and had need of nothing. There's two churches. The spirit-filled church, the remnant church, and the Laodicean lukewarm church now in our world. That's happening. But God is moving powerfully. People are putting tents up. People are having crusades and God is assembling those that are ready, that are spirit filled and he is moving. It's happening in Australia. We are ready to do our evangelistic thing very soon. Very soon. As the Lord prepares us. Let's have a look now as we come close. Matthew 25. Let's talk about these 10 virgins. Matthew 25. It says, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Next slide. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. That's Jesus returning. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should be not enough for us and you, but go, gather, but, but rather, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with them to the wedding, and the door was shut. 
Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. But he answered and said, Surely I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the hour, day, which the Son of Man is coming. Whew. Let that sink in. Those ten were all believers. They were all Christians. That tells me the person next to you might not be ready. That's 50%. In this church aren't ready. That's shocking, isn't it? 50% of this church may not be ready for the coming of the Lord. Because those were ten virgins. Five were ready, five weren't. And that door was shut. Let that sink in. And start looking at your life. Start looking at your relationships. Start looking at your behaviors. Start searching your heart if you really do want to serve the Lord. Why are you coming to church? Ask yourself, why are we in Christian faith? Why do we do what we do? Because the world is watching you and me. They're watching your every move. And that's why a lot of them won't set foot in church because of the hypocrisy and the religious judgments. Who think that we're right but we're not. So Christians are not ready for the coming of the Lord. And the church is not ready for the coming of the Lord. That's a fact. Say this, Jesus, I pray today, if there's anything in my life that you're not happy with, purge it out, Lord, that I'll be ready for your coming. Because you ain't going to get someone else's oil. And I've preached, my faith is for my faith. Don't you suck the faith out of me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Don't start sucking my faith because I need my faith. <laughs> I need to get through it myself. Amen. Christians aren't ready. A large portion of them. I see them every week. I minister to them all week, every day. They're quite happy to completely write themselves off with any kind of diabolical thing of this world. But then when the demons start to torment, we don't like the demons. And then when it's a decision to overcome, I can't overcome. I don't have faith now. But I can snort that coke till I'm blue in the face and jump around from here to here. But when it comes to my freedom, I'm not committed to my Lord as much as I was to the coke. That's what I'm seeing. We're not really that willing to push through and stand in our faith and preach the word in our life and overcome. I'm going to come to conclusion conclusion right now. We are in great times for the church. We are in a fantastic time for the church because of the men of past who said they only wish to have been here at this time that we are in today. We're going to see the greatest move of God. We're going to see souls come into the kingdom. We're going to see people delivered at these altars because God is getting ready to anoint His church and He is putting His church on fire. Only those churches that are willing to work with the Lord, we will see the move of God. So what do I need to do as a Christian today after hearing this intense message? Where does this put my life how do I conduct my life? Do I go sell my mortgage and move on that farmland? No. Do I go sell everything like they did in the 90s when my grandfather brought the trumpets out and said the coming of the Lord is here? Ba -ba -da -ba! And everyone sold their properties and panicked. He even brought those trumpets out. He said, as I say the Lord's coming, I want you to sound the trumpets. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba! Back in those times, people were selling their properties like that. I'm going to, the Lord's coming. We've got to get out. We've got to get out. Get out. No, now's the time to stand still and be an answer to our world. Stand up for what's right. Let's go to Luke 19 and see what Jesus tells you to do. He says, so he called 10 of his servants, delivered to them 10 manners, and said to them, do business. Till I come. What does that mean? We are to occupy till he comes. Keep busy with the things of God. Occupy your stance in faith until he comes. Be busy in the things of God. 
Jesus doesn't expect you to panic and live in fear. He wants you to occupy till he comes. We are supposed to be the church triumphant, the church of victory, the church of healing. Not scattered and running away in fear because this is the greatest time of a harvest. We need to be prepared for it. Amen? Amen. We need to see a move of God. Say this, I will occupy till he comes. I will work on my life. I will strengthen my faith. I'm going to be anointed that when people come, I speak the language of God and bring them into the house. That's what Jesus was saying. Do business. Carry on. Amen. Titus 2.13. What is our hope? This is our hope. Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what I'm doing. Getting myself ready. Looking forward to His coming. Being ready in faith for that blessed hope that's coming. Amen. We are to look for our hope. Don't find hope in this world. Don't find hope in your government. Don't find hope in anything else but Jesus Christ. Because He's eternal. Last scripture. This scripture. I want you to read this when you go home. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. You know how you're going to survive? The Word of God. The Word of God. You're not worried about what laws and governments put in place. You are going to survive through the Word of God because it's the Word of God that will stand the test of time. It's eternal and it's forever. And this will sustain you. When you're struggling and you get up in the morning, you start quoting those scriptures. I'm saved. I'm washed. I'm clean. I deserve to be healed. Why? Because of what His Word says. I don't care if all the toilet paper is going in the supermarket. My God will supply my needs. He will supply my needs. Some of you don't know how I was struggling financially when we started this church. No money for food. No money for groceries. My wife says to me, Hilton, you're going to have to go back to work. I said, no, God's going to supply our needs. He's going to provide. Two days, a lady came with two packets of groceries to my front door and left them. I don't even know who she was. Because God will provide in the times of difficulty if you will stand on that word. The food is still coming. The food is still coming. Free bananas and oranges. Why? Because I said, God, if you are a God that I serve, my needs will be provided. You are to stand on this word and be consistent in the times you live in and you won't be deceived. The Lord will not forsake the righteous. As the days were Noah and Lot, as he rescued righteous Noah and Lot, he will do so for you and me. The Lord will not forsake you in this hour. Whenever judgment comes, God rescues his people. But if you're not ready, you're going to go into the judgment of God. So be ready this morning. Close your eyes. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word that is preached today. I thank you, Lord, for this great place that you've established in Australia, in Tweed Heads, Australia. I thank you, Lord, that even the paint on the walls you provided for. I thank you, Lord, for every soul that has come and gone from this church. I thank you, Lord, for every person that's been delivered of demon powers and are free today. I thank you, Lord, for your word that when we said, Lord, use us, we are available. And I pray this morning for every member of this church. I pray over every single one of them. I come against every fear, all unbelief, 
or doubt in the name of Jesus Christ, I break it off your life. I speak healing in your life this morning, and I pray that God's blessings will come upon you. And right now, I would like everyone to say this. I ask you, Lord, for a special supernatural anointing to come upon my life to fulfill your plan and to be an example to my friends, to my neighbors, to those that are suffering, to those that are battling. We are the answer to the solution. Amen. I'm going to lead you through one more prayer as we have soft music. Just close your eyes again. If you're in this church this morning and you've never committed your heart to God, I want to give you some time. And people have given their hearts to God. But there are three main areas you can find peace with God. Number one, we acknowledge we are not perfect. None is perfect. All has fallen short of the glory of God. Number two, we are to acknowledge we've made a mistake and we make a repentance of that to God. And number three, we believe that Christ rose from the dead, seated on the right hand for you and me. If you would like to pray this prayer, I want to pray with you. So if all of us could pray, but if this is your first time, I want to give opportunity for whoever that is to come up to the front at the end of the service, but let's all pray this prayer together. We come before you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. And we acknowledge we are not perfect. We've made many mistakes. And I acknowledge that. And so I ask you, Lord, for your forgiveness as I repent of every wrong on every way that I've lived my life, not according to your standards. I repent of that, receive your forgiveness, and I believe in my heart that you, Jesus, are the Christ. You came, you died, and you rose again. And I believe in you now, and I ask you, to come inside my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Amen. God bless you this morning. Let's have some worship. I want to pray for you before we go. If you need prayer, come up to the front. Live stream, God bless you. Let's lift that music up. I want to pray for some of you.
pain 